the odd judo. I've just seen what you excellent. You're a legend. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, cheers. I am I'm ready, my friend. Well. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll, I'll maybe not switch across straight away. It looks like he, I just caught the corner. I think he's having a quick drink before we get started. The <laughs> point you were drinking was the one and only Iron Brew. What a legend. Thank you. That means you actually watched my stream. <laughs> I've seen you lurking before, so that's cool, man. <laughs> of course. Well, thanks for having me on, honestly. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Mate, I'm so chuffed. Um, I've had just, it's just big name after big name. And um, I think we probably need to start with congratulations. 700,000 subscribers. It's been oh, a welcome in, but pretty awesome. You happy with that? Yeah, extremely happy. <laughs> <laughs> Support amazing. I, I don't know what I was expecting you to say that. Imagine if you said no. <laughs> no, I mean, support's amazing. I, I can't thank everyone enough. And I just want to thank you for having me on as well. I, um, you know, I, I love to see positivity within the community. And, uh, you know, you, you do a, a good job here with the show. You put in a lot of hard work. So I'm I'm happy to jump on. And uh, like you said, Supercell's been happy. They've been, they've been, good to us with this update we've got a they, lot to talk about haven't they we? have there's a lot to talk about so um we're gonna so why i always start with in terms of an interview um is start with some sort of fairly genetic questions now okay. i know that you've answered a few of these on your video that you just put out for 700k um so we'll maybe run through them a little bit quickly but i feel like we have to ask these are the questions that we have to ask when i said has okay. anyone got any questions for judo then you know, the one about where's the name came up. So we'll get to that in a second. So uh, when did you start playing? Tell us about um, when you started and how you got into uh, Clash of Clans. Yeah, I started in June of 2012. And um, no, 2013. Game came out in 2012. <laughs> that would have been good. I started before the game launched. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I, I started in June of 2013. I knew about the game in 2012. A lot of my friends played it, but... I was kind of gearing up for my master's degree and I knew this was a game that I would get addicted to. So I reluctantly did not play it. And well, <laughs> here we are eight years later. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, what's your, what's your uh, favorite town hall level? Uh, my favorite town hall is always the top one. It's got the most yeah. content. That's kind of goes without saying. I think apart from that though, town hall eight because that's when strategy opens up. I feel any lower than that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, Town Hall 8, though, is when you can kind of start to see, like, back-end hogs, back-end loons, things like that. Um, and closely followed by Town Hall 9, because that's kind of where the heart of the competitive community was for so long. I mean, it's, it yeah. feels weird to say that, you know, <laughs> just remembering those days when Town Hall 9 was the, the pinnacle of the clash community so the kind of town hall eight and nine after 14 currently yeah they were so it was i think you're right so dragons are when you start being like at town hall seven when you start being able to like actually like you have to learn about funneling and all that sort of mm. stuff but yeah then town hall eight you've got the hogs just really becoming viable and then yeah and then obviously the old queen charge at town hall nine or the queen walk it was never a charge was it when did it become a charge it was always a walk and then we just started throwing the queen yeah, straight question. in <laughs> it just it didn't develop you had the queen would always walk down the side wouldn't it and now straight in the middle so yeah uh anyway sorry i've gone totally off no that's fine it's, <laughs> it's funny because we very rarely now with strategies do a queen walk most of the time it is a queen charge whereas you know that's i, I think that's what's really cool about clash is seeing the evolution of attack strategies and I always think it's cool when something new is discovered that was always in the game. It's just that no one had ever tried it. Yeah. Um, think... That doesn't happen as much anymore with friendly challenges, but I, I always think it's cool when something like that pops up. I remember that it was uh, towards um, the end of last year with, with uh, not with Super Witches, sorry, with Normal Witches. Normal Witches suddenly became like, like this incredibly OP sort of troop. And... They hadn't changed anything about, like, nothing had changed with witches. They just, the base layout with these little gaps and the walls started appearing and that made the skeletons really effective. But in terms of, like, a buff or a nerf to troops, and like, they hadn't done anything to witches. They just mm. suddenly became really, really strong, which was just, yeah, bizarre. Uh, which takes yeah, me to the next just... question. Sorry, yeah, go for it. I'll let you go ahead. Otherwise, <laughs> we could just chat all night. <laughs> <laughs> the next question was favourite strategy. So, I don't know, just favourite strategy or troop, whatever way you want to look at it. Uh, I'll answer both. And my favorite troops, the dragon. I think other since Town Hall Seven, 
Uh, I've always loved using that troop and the mass dragon strategy. I don't know what it is. So it's it's great to see it back in the meta or like usable at the top level. I think through Town Hall 11, 12, it wasn't really wasn't viable for a year or two there. Um, my favorite strategy is Queen Charge Lalo, always. It, I just think, not that I'm very good with it myself, but it's just so amazing to watch. When you, when you see a pro use that strategy and it's just so effortless, it's, yeah. it's tremendous to watch. Yeah, I, when you see the, um, I, I like I like Sui because I don't un, I like the the Sui Lalo because I don't understand how they make their their heroes go in that way. It just totally throws me off. Um, but yeah, when you see a Queen Charge, especially when you see like the three Super Wall breaks and mm. the jump spell in there as well, you know that it's going to be like an epic charge and it's going to go so deep into the base. I think they're just my two favorite parts of an attack I, I love queen charges and watching when it's so well done and likewise lalo is so difficult to perform that i love watching it um you know i know when we used to do the when casting we would do events i used to watch carbon do his sui lalos and i just couldn't i can't fathom how he does it like you'd think he's got three hands you know the way he's yeah. deploying the balloons <laughs> crazy um sorry i've just CJ has just come in. Sorry, so, you know, um, CJ, thank you so much for the one year, one year's worth of uh, of subs. Thank you, man. First month that I became an affiliate, you uh, you subscribed. Uh, so thank you, man. He's got that wee legends badge, which is awesome. Uh, thank you, CJ. Sorry, I had to take a stop there just to say thank you for that. Oh, uh, thank okay. you for all you the follows and stuff as well, guys. Um, I think someone else came in with a sub as well that I missed. Um, but guys, thank you so much for all them. Uh, I just you know, while we're talking it's difficult to keep up with stuff um right go on then judo tell us about it and, and i know that you've done this before and you probably do it every live stream where did the name come from <laughs> i tend to answer this on um i tend to answer this on live streams because it's too long to answer within videos although like you said in my 700k video i did answer it uh i've done judo my whole life i find it weird when people ask me if i've ever done judo i, I think it would be a strange name to pick if i didn't but <laughs> i guess there we go um i lived in america i trained full-time over there and i was at a competition and my coach asked me to run to the car pick something up it was a two-minute job i got sidetracked needed to de-escalate a situation basically so that took a little while and i returned to my coach two hours later and he called me a sloth for the rest of the day and then that evening we were all setting up xbox live accounts because gears of war the original gears of war came out and that's when i set my gamer tag as nice there you i go. love it because <laughs> it, it plays really nicely it's just like you know when you get like uh i don't know you get like a, an adjective and an animal um if you get like a random gamer tag that's what comes through quite a lot of the time and so that's I, that's where initially i thought it came from and then uh, i think it was oh. was it the last worlds um live stream that you popped on that you did like a live stream on that uh sunday and uh yeah your the the judo sloth um story you you told there so yeah and obviously oh did you, i i can't remember yeah. i can't remember doing it there but oh well yeah no you did <laughs> thanks so, for the support <laughs> yeah. um okay right i think what we all want to talk about is the summer update it, like we say it was so awesome that Supercell put this on for us. Um, I suppose the first thing, we, I mean, you're like, you know, top level, top Supercell, t top tier creator for Supercell. Um, is it tomorrow? Can you confirm that for us? Are we? Are you allowed to do that? I mean, we know that the final update came out. <laughs> the we, final don't, we, we never get to know dates, actually, because, you know, they, I guess it's just unpredictable and they, they don't like to, they don't like to give dates. I, I remember one time they gave a date, which was April 1st. I don't know if you can remember that. And the, the update was delayed. <laughs> so that was, you know, that was the one time they ever gave a date and it was delayed. And I think it was out of their hands. So from there, they never give us a date. Um, but it's, it's historically not long after Sneak Peeks have finished. Sneak Peeks finished today. So we'll just have to wait and see. Cool. I, w I was hoping it would be this morning and then you all put out that final update and I was like, <laughs> oh man, okay. Because I was like, imagine if you've actually, like I've actually been able to play, obviously you've been playing around with it, but if I actually got to like unlock some troops and then, I don't know, spam some uh, dragon riders or 
those rocket balloons. <laughs> it just seems awesome. Oh, I can't wait for them to be added. I think uh, particularly the rocket balloons. I don't know, you know, what you and your chat think as well, but I think the rocket balloons are much more viable than dragon riders. But sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's tough until it gets out into the hands of millions to see yeah. exactly the best strategy. But whilst I think the dragon riders are good, and I, I personally use them with a queen charge, try and get the town hall and kind of flush the outside of the base with the dragon riders, I think um, I think we'll see the rocket balloons more often than the dragon riders. It's a really, for me, it's a really strange decision to, like, Lalo is already so strong. So to make a super troop out of the balloon is just i don't know it feels like you're just putting a hay spell in it aren't you um mm. so it feels uh it feels like it's going to be really overpowered but um i can't wait i to... personally don't think we'll see it in lalo uh, i really no. don't i think other than if you know when, when the pros can really break down a base and maybe there's like an archer tower and an air defense or not an air defense because the hound would pathway but maybe there's like a small section of the base where you could use a couple of them and merge that in with your general Lalo, but I think for an overall like composition, I don't actually think we'll see too many of the rocket balloons in place of regular balloons because, I mean, when I tried it, the extra housing space just wasn't enough. Just, you could just, that's you could surgically enough. deploy your regular loons, the hounds protecting them, and you're not as susceptible to splash then either. And once the haste has gone off, like it's it's exactly the same basically. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um. I think probably an interesting one uh, for me is that there seems like there's quite a... So last summer update, or probably maybe... Yeah, last summer update, I think it was, was a pretty big summer update. Um, they kind of made this quite a traditional, quite a big update now. It used to just be like a small thing, and now it's just getting bigger and bigger. But I feel like some of this stuff was maybe meant to be in March, and then stuff got delayed. They held back Town Hall 14 to April, and then they thought, screw it, we need to drop something, and now they've dropped some stuff in. Do you get that impression, or do you... I, I don't know if you've got the internet trap, but just... Mm. Do you feel that, or do you think this was always the intention to... Have, like, I feel the new troop being not at the start of the town hall level seems really strange to me. No, I'd, I mean, that never crossed my mind, maybe. I don't know. I I don't think so, though. I think the hero pets were kind of the town hall 14... Yeah. ...like, addition. And one thing I I, I love that the Clash of Clans team now take a lot more risks than they used to. You yeah. know, there was a little phase there a few years ago where it was almost like they were scared to add a new troop in case they broke the game or something. And I I think now they, you know, they very much just pump out huge content. They're not afraid to just like, I mean, just think over the last two years how much the game and the meta has changed yeah. each and every update. They're not afraid to do that now. And I, I personally love that. Um, so. I, you know, it doesn't surprise me that we see new troops on more of a regular cadence. Uh, so in answer to your question, it never crossed my mind, but <laughs> I mean, maybe I, 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 I wouldn't have thought so though, because uh, like without that, what else would there be for this summer update? Like a I super suppose, troop. Yeah. I mean, they dropped the super archer without it even being an update. So it wouldn't really have been much of an update. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. It, it gave, Gave a nice amount of stuff. Yeah, did you know? Do you notice that if you go back a few years when you had Deja Vu, hello man, welcome to the screen. Yeah, it's welcome. The stream. Um, I'm keeping my own chat. Deja as well, Vu, by the way, guys. To, yeah. Don't want to dive in and like respond to your chat. You know. Yeah. Gotta, <laughs> I just caught it in the and... corner of my eye that he's saying that he's there. Hello, man. We need to get you on at some point as well. Um, yeah. The um, I can't remember what I was going to say now. Um, yeah. So there was a few years ago, and like they weren't like super. I think they even went as far as to say. We're not planning any more Town Hall levels. Town Hall 10 is as high as we're going. And then we had ClashCon, we had Tencent sort of getting involved. And actually there's been this sort of, this realisation that actually if they want this game to continue to go, they need to add new levels and new content. And, and like even like skins for me are such a nice addition to the game, such a such an exciting addition. Just just gives you something to talk about as a content creator. And I didn't call myself a content creator, but in the very, like, I, I yeah, try my are, best. But, everyone um, starts, you know, everyone starts Yeah, somewhere. exactly. But I remember years ago, just like, I used to make videos. So I did, my YouTube channel is very old, but it's got, got a big old gap where nothing happened in it. Um, I changed jobs and all that. But I was getting bored because all I was doing, because 
I was just re- just sort of re- reviewing my uh, clan's wars, and we were just doing dragon attacks, and it's like, oh, it's another dragon attack, and oh, here's a here's a queen charge. La- it, like there wasn't really much going on. Whereas mm. now, every time you turn on the game, like people drop into streams and they're like, "What's a pet? What's going on?" And you're like, "You think that's good? What about the siege machines? What about this?" What? People, it's just new stuff all the time. It's so much fun. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. There's not a question in it. I was just talking. So yeah, I, I mean, I can jump in on that because, and give my opinion. I, I, I agree. I think within my comments section, I always get responses from people that are, you know, back to the game and they're so much new to the game and they've, you know, they've watched videos and gone over, you know, learned all of this stuff. And I think it just, it gives them a much better feeling. I, I don't think I ever picked up on that part where they said they weren't adding a new town hall level. I'd be interested to like listen to that back, but um. I think it I was on a they, forum many moons ago, and it might not even really, be from them, to be fair. I know they <laughs> were like wanting to expand game features and not necessarily like, not that I want to call it end game content, but you know what I mean, like highest level content. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as far as I've heard, they will just keep going with town hall levels whilst the game is popular. And like, that's what we want to hear, right? Yeah. <laughs> because at the end of the day, uh, I don't know if you've seen this in my Q&A video, there was one moment where I wasn't like as connected with clash and it was when i was you know max town hall 10 town hall 11 was out and i was for the competitive of competitiveness of my clan i was just stuck at town hall 10 and without being able to upgrade without anything else there you know i was starting to i was starting to not enjoy it as much and at the end of the day i, I said i have to upgrade but what i what i mean by that is by not having extra content by just having features and nothing to upgrade i don't think the game would be the same yeah no i agree um so what part of this update are you most excited about i think we might have talked about this already but better you most, is it the is it the 90 degree turn on the base is that the is that the biggest part of the whole update <laughs> um <laughs> I think that's really cool, actually, for yeah, like copying yeah. bases, because I copy all of my bases. I'm not a base builder. I, to be honest, I tend to get mine off uh, RH because they post exclusive bases in my server. So if anyone <laughs> wants to like beat my base, that's you know that's where all my traps are. But anyways, uh, I think it's great to like rotate because look, I think the majority of Clash players copy bases. I don't think there's many people that like actively, you know, go to the lengths of build. Like they might build a base, but it might not be. It's not the same as an attack strategy and learning how to do that. I think base building is a lot more of a unique uh, skill. Yeah. Uh, so I do think that's a useful feature. But I think for me, probably the rocket balloon. I'm, I know I kind of mentioned it before. As good as the dragon rider is, I think it's a it's a troop that we didn't have. And I I always like when troops are different. It's not like a basically a different graphic of something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. And maybe a couple of extra like stats. It is something that is unique in itself. But I just think the rocket balloon is something that I'd never thought of, but it's so useful, you know, for sniping air defense, maybe sniping buildings in the uh, defenses in the second layer, whether it be a, a multi. Think about when you do try and walk around, but you're worried that the multi or the scattershot locks onto your healers. Yeah. Now you can just ping a couple of them in and boom, Bob's your uncle. So I, I think those are my, you know, the, the rocket balloons are what I'm most looking forward to. So the the other side of that is that um, we have got some defensive updates in here as well, but balance is always a big question that people, especially within the competitive community, are always talking about balance, and it's really important within sort mm. of the the circles that I tend to move in. Um, not that I'm competitive in it; <laughs> I'm a rubbish competitive player. But you know what I mean. Uh, the people that I stream. Um, do you think air is like air is already so strong? Dragons, Lalo. Do you think that we're looking at air being overpowered here, or is there enough? With these, uh, with the ADs and the Archer Towers, I think it's always tough to get that, um, to get that right as like a single person that is, you know, testing the update. And it's uh, for me, I think it's pretty well balanced. But I'm not, you know, on the level that the pros are at Clash Worlds. So I think it's it's tough to give it like a definitive answer but what i will say is they always seem to get the balance right you know as as much as sometimes it seems a little bit out of whack they always either adjust it relatively quickly or it is just a case of like bases or defenses catching up because we always tend to see an offensive heavy upgrade um like when this up when this update hits 
I, I'm not rushing to upgrade my archer towers and, you know, I'm going straight for the, the yeah. troops. And I think everyone's the same, right? So it's, And you've got the potions we can, though as well, don't you? Exactly, to, yeah. We, to... I'd love to see a defensive potion. I mentioned that on the, uh, uh, yeah. on the AMA, actually. I'd love to see you know, being able to boost the defenses, whether it be for friendly war or, you know, just for that war defense, whatever. I think it would be cool, but it's... It's tough to, it's tough to say. It is a, it's an A update, isn't it? We've got all yeah. A upgrades, um, you know. But they they test balance before they put an update out. They don't just like throw it out with any testing. So, you know, if it's if it is massively overpowered, I'm sure they'll be on it and they'll they'll fix it. Cool, cool. Okay, what about the timing then? Uh, that's the other thing that comes up. So we had the April update. Uh, Town 14 came out, people got given a month to get ready for uh, the May pre-qualifiers um, and there was a lot of complaining then about you've not given us enough time, nine months worth of pet uh, levels and all this sort of stuff and um, this is too expensive, this has turned into pay to win and one week before they've added some pretty significant updates um, is this is this good timing? Have Supercell thought about this do you think? Or do you think they've do you think this is right? I don't know. There you go. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it's a good a timing of ever. Like, when when else are they supposed to update? Like, just wait six months until Worlds is over? Or, yeah. like, they have to update at some point through there. And the competitive community, like, you know, I, I'm all into esports. Like, as you know, like, yeah. I'm very much on the esports side, but I always see things from the wider picture as well. And... You know, they, they can't delay or... Yeah, I, I guess they can to a degree. You know, like I know um, First Worlds, for example, they, they were planning... I'm trying to even get my Town Hall levels right. Like Town Hall 13 was not too long after Worlds. Yeah. Finished, they're obviously not going to like throw that in there, but they, you know, they have a plan. It's in mind, but they also can't um, like adapt massively based on worlds but i don't think it's you know i mean like you said a portion you've got the things upgraded and like an archer tower level i think the strongest people will prevail anyway i don't think you know yeah. whether you've upgraded all of your defenses or not i don't think that's the determining factor most of the time for me i don't know how people feel and i know at the very top level like it does make a difference i'm not playing it down but for me it's all about the base layout like i can crush a ma maxed base and then fail on a semi-upgraded base because it's just the wrong layout or I just, you know, yeah. just struggled with that. So I think the, like, last month's qualifiers was testament of that. You know, alternate attacks, MCES, they both got to the finals of it and that's who we expected. Yeah. So I think the strongest people will prevail and... Whilst, yes, if you max your account, you've got a slighter advantage, I don't think it's, certainly don't think it's pay to win or anything like that. Yeah, no, that's cool, that's cool. Um, I am, um, I, I, yeah, I'm kind of, oh, I think I've just closed everything down. Oh, 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 hello, oh. Two seconds, <laughs> I I'm can just hear frozen you. you. It's okay, Stream no, no, it's fine. Today. I just managed to <laughs> shut everything down. You you went and froze, so, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, that, no, that's cool. I that's... raised my chair a bit, actually. You've got me... Hidden behind my microphone. Sorry. See what I can do here. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, sit I've up and get my, my posture uh, there right. We go. <laughs> yeah, you probably you were sitting in one way and then you've moved slightly. That's all. It's, that's uh, what it's all about. Um, alternate attacks. Then let's uh, let's have a wee chat about then. Um, what do you, what what are are they? Why are they so good? How are they so good? Um, I think they literally do absolutely everything that you need to do you know they they have an entire team around them and it's not just the team of five people that you see attacking like they have all of the base builders they have the wider like yeah. um team for their organization as well and i think they they respect everything they don't they don't underestimate anybody they prepare to the nth degree i've never seen a team um prepare the way that they do like they will test bases again and again and again and they will just you know they have team meetings like after every uh stream i know after the worlds we had like last year we had like kind of 
online after party type things and they were jumping into the chat as well it was great to have a you know a conversation with them but they would you know, chat for a little while and then they had to go prepare like they were had a meeting to go yeah. and prepare who they were facing off the next day and i think they're just they just do everything and i think the more you prepare and the more hours you put into something then the better results you're going to have and they're all amazingly talented players, but they all put a significant amount of effort in. And I'm not saying that other teams don't, but they just seem to literally never stop. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah so we've got someone in the you've got someone in the chat there asking how how do you become a better attacker? Um, I know for sure that I'm a better attacker when I'm playing more. If I'm streaming other people playing a lot, then I pick up some tips and all that. But actually, if I, if that mean that whole evening means that I haven't done an attack all evening, then I'm not as good as if I've been playing. I'm not very good anyway. And but that it's that level of practice, isn't it? That's the that's yeah. the main key to it, isn't it? And um, do you want to plug Clash School or we? <laughs> there are other people in Clash. You're involved in Clash School, but I think you're pretty uh, full on with it. But. Um, there is a paid service Clash School that uh, Clash Champs do um, I've actually got H star coming on next week um, with Big Vale uh, which would be good oh, cool. and he'll probably talk about that a bit more anyway um, you become a better attacker by using code Judo since Deja Vu <laughs> there you go that's that's the way to do it yeah <laughs> um, so about Worlds um, let's uh, let's move on to that now what um, okay. take us through a typical day um, I don't know if I want you to take me through a typical day when you used to go there or now tell us about now what happens i can do moment? both if you wish i mean they're, they're a little bit uh, i guess we got to be conscious on time as well so i mean when with when we are there in person the events the preparation and things kind of on our end is exactly the same but we we obviously have to be a lot more conscious um cameras camera angles lighting everything like that so we, we're kind of involved with a lot of the tech rehearsals as well um, and basically it's knowing where to, you know, where to be and where to look and just the overall, like, there's a lot more to think about. Like, you're not just when you're at home, you, you know, the viewer is there, there's one, that's camera. It. There's one yeah. camera and there's, yeah. whereas, you know, in the studio, you've got multiple cameras, you've got people as well. You've got to be acknowledging like there's so much more going on. And even let's say with the Telestrator, you know, the Telestrator's or, or used to be anyway, like in the middle of the studio, basically. So I have to negotiate getting from backstage to this telestrator without ever being on camera. So it's like, you know, I walk from here to here whilst one shot's going on. And then when the camera switches, I now walk from here to here. And then it's kind <laughs> of like negotiating yourself to the telestrator. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. But in terms of general preparation, obviously, you know, we're watching wars, we're pulling stats or whatever it is. I'm sure, you know, all of the casters prepare in different ways, but I personally you know, research all of the teams, pull any relevant stats or player information that I might want to bring up in the cast. Obviously, you end up having notes and notes of, you know, information and you, you only ever drop in things when they're relevant. Um, but it's better to be well prepared than not prepared. And then in terms of rehearsals, we, you know, we're online for a little while. Depends on the tournament, depends on a, a number of factors, really. But we... You know, we have rehearsals sometimes the day before, most of the time before the show as well. And then when the show's on, I mean, that's what you see behind the stage when I say the stage, but when a couple of people are casting and other people aren't, we are still kind of doing jobs and different roles for a few different things. Um, so it's it's very full on, but it's it's awesome. I mean, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, do you, I th when you're not on the stream, um, I think the thing that I've noticed is the thing that's been different when you're not on the stream and with this remote one especially is the guys that aren't on the stream are jumping in are in the Twitch chat and impossibly on the YouTube chat as well but I can watch it on Twitch um, how do you find that um, it's an interesting atmosphere the Twitch chat sometimes we've got um, lots of uh, armchair attackers um, quite an interesting one there um, I, I mean personally I don't go on the chat very much i do on occasion but i actually don't go to the chat very often because um i think people can multitask and prepare in different ways for me uh when i end up you know going to chat and reading through that i i get distracted personally so right, i yeah. i don't really go to the chat um so during the stream i don't 
watch the chats. I, I tend to like when the countdown's there and I'll join and maybe add a little bit of hype or so. But once the stream starts, I'm engaged in like caster mode, not viewing mode. So me personally, when I'm not watching, I'm like pulling stats from previous wars, updating my notes, kind of kind of watching the stream a little bit as well in terms of like because I can still hear the other casters, not necessarily uh, like watching it, but I'm also listening to what's going on in case something happens, like a moment that I want to pick up on, like later down the line. So I'm kind of like preparing for my next cast, if you will. Yeah. Um. So I, I think it just depends on the person, how well they can multitask, how they like to prepare. Some people, you know, it, it it's kind of the same as like when I used to do judo, people would prepare for a fight differently. Like some people would prepare to get amped up. Some people would prefer calm time. Like I think some of the others might prefer a bit of time away. I don't want to speak for them, but they might want to like switch off for 10 minutes and like, you know, just, just calm down or so, or, you know, it, it just depends. But me personally, I, I don't really go to the chat. And uh, who out of the street, who do you enjoy commentating with the most? Who's your sort of your, your oh. favorite person to commentate with? <laughs> nice question. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Pick a honestly, <laughs> uh, everybody has their own uh, attributes and talents and i enjoy casting with different people for different reasons because uh i really think we have a a great team and there's look there's so many people that could be involved there's there's such a talent within the clash community but i think everyone brings their own nuggets to the stream um and it, it doesn't matter who, who you cast with like i just enjoy casting so whoever i'm casting with i'm kind of just you know playing off them and i'm still going to enjoy it either way just depends on I guess my role because I cast differently depending on who I'm casting with. Um, because like I said, it's a it's a team effort, so it's very much trying to like raise each other up and put on the best possible stream rather than like just randomly casting, if that makes sense. Um but yeah, I think I think we all have different attributes and <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. No, it, I enjoy casting with people for different reasons. That's a, that's a very diplomatic answer. You answered that very well. Well done. None of them will hate you after this. None of them will watch it, but it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's true, though. Davey, um, Woody, uh, just, this, is, this is what always comes up when I ask this question. Um, people, Woody is very Marmite. Woody serves a role mm. within that casting team, I think, and... Uh, yeah, there's some Woody's saying Woody is like extremely talented. Yeah, Woody's, and Woody he's so exceptional at hyping other people up, isn't he? Yeah, but just his, not even that. Like, yes, he his ability to hype the stream is amazing, but like his vocabulary and the yeah. way that he can like uh, articulate things. And when you get into casting and you're trying to improve in this area, you start to see like how good he actually is. Yeah, uh, Woody's like incredible. He never uh, trips over a word. Uh, no, he, he never trips. It's incredible. So yeah, yeah he's very very good. <laughs> and uh, I will say as well, you know, that's look at Apple, Android, Mac, PC. Like I've studied like business a little bit, I guess, with going into content creation and like creating your online online, um, you know, brand like brand building. And uh, there's a a book that I read, uh, and this one guy says, you know, if you if you don't have haters, you just haven't reached a broad enough audience, you know, and that's <laughs> ultimately, that's how it is. Like, people have opinions, and that's fine. I'm sure there's people that don't like me casting, and that's fine. Like, people have their preferences, um, but, you know, when you, when you get into casting and you're actually trying to improve on that stuff, you start to appreciate, like, how good Woody is. Yeah. Cool, man. Um... So we had a whole load of technical issues. We kind of covered these a little bit with Bash. Uh, Bash was on right after um, the technical, the, 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 the first weekend. Um, do you think they'll be resolved for this month? Do you think the Supercell have got their heads around it? Um, what was going on with the... Okay, we can't excuse, we can't make up any excuses for the people that didn't have their bases set or, you know, all the sort of the people who are just brand new to a friendly war. But do you think those technical issues will be um, will be sorted out? I mean, I hope so. I think it was probably a... I mean, I don't know. I can't, you know, I don't think... can't speak for anything that happened, but I'm sure it was just a, a multitude of factors. And I think probably one of the biggest things was that previously you signed up, like, on a website and you kind of... It was a little bit, like, 
you had to be serious in order to sign up and put yeah. your team at five. And when it's in game, I think there's just there's going to be not only more people signing up, which is awesome because you never know when. You know, I think back to like before Worlds started, and I think of like the teams that were like the best in the world, and we had the rise of clans that we never even knew existed, and players, yeah. and that for me, that's just what I love about the esports and like what Worlds has provided. So I love the fact that it's opening the doors to more players. I think that you know, it we we are going to get other people sign up that. <laughs> aren't quite as prepared i guess we can say it as yeah. like they they don't necessarily understand all of the rules or the you know it can be there but if they sign up and they there's quite a, a lot of things in terms of like getting you getting online at times signing up at time i think there's probably just a lot of people that you know weren't quite prepared for what was going on um and i don't know i mean i i know they tested the system and things but whether they can test on like that humongous scale of things i don't know um I'm more than confident that when they put their minds to things, like they never, they never seem to let things drag out or like, I'm, I'm more than confident that they'll have done everything in their power to improve it for this month. Cool. Um, what do you think about the, um, the middle of the night, um, diamonds? Um, it's not the middle the night for everyone, qualifiers? but it's the middle of the night for us. And, uh, yeah, yeah. so... We've got um, 1 a.m. Uh, UTC, so that's 2 a.m. for yourself. Um, mm. What um, were you were you shocked about that? Was that like a were you, did you see that coming or? I mean, uh, no and no, I guess. Like I didn't see it coming, but I wasn't shocked on it either. I mean, they can pick whenever they want to stream. Like the way I look at it, if I was, you know, flown somewhere to go and cast. I would cast whatever time it was, right? I mean, just because it's at home doesn't matter that it's the middle of the night. Um, I had to adjust my sleep a little bit, let's say that. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, they. I'm sure they have their reasons. I don't necessarily know 100% what they are. Maybe it's like viewership. Maybe it's, I, I don't know. I, mean, I know the yeah. actual pre-qualifiers rotate in the times, um, but that's not good i would say for the live streams because then you lose that you know predictability of people knowing what time the stream is on if that makes sense yeah. um i don't know I mean, maybe I, it was I just to, only... to vary the you know the time to to see if it had an impact on viewership and to hit a different demographic or yeah not sure i can only assume it's because of that that the growing market that is sort of the indian clash base and 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 also the the well established esports scene of um of sort of like Japan China who just have are always having to play these worlds in the middle of the night so I'm a, yeah. I, that's the only reason I can think is that actually they've maybe identified that that's where a massive potential player base is that they can maybe encourage some esportsness that's not a word but you know what I mean encourage yeah, some esports maybe. into that. Just give them an opportunity. Us, but... Queen Walkers always have to attack in the middle of the night. Didn't yeah, they? exactly. Previously, they did anyway, so yeah, maybe. I uh, maybe Queen Walker's totally fresh face, be totally different. <laughs> um, so we'll move on to uh content creation now. I've got one a guy has kept posting stuff in here. Um, okay. I keep seeing it, guy. Uh, Obi Leah are my dogs. Uh, asked you do he has any videos from his judo exhibition matches and if he has dabbled in MMA at all. Um, he should put a, cl a clip of himself in a judo fight in his 800k <laughs> subscriber video. So there you go. He's given you some content ideas. Um, have you got any videos of uh, of? I mean, I have lots of like videos of when I used to, you know, compete. I don't necessarily think any of them are good quality as such. You know, uh, I used to record. We used to record them to analyze them and yeah. uh, you know, like watch our fights back. It wasn't wasn't it with content creation in mind. So I don't think they have the best. Uh, quality as such um i did a little bit of kickboxing for and like wrestling jiu-jitsu i mainly did grappling sports obviously like that's what judo is when i moved to america i didn't realize how big wrestling was over there like it's not as big of a thing over here really yeah, is it? Really um not. so when i first went to america i was getting beat from people that were like you know top wrestlers and had just started in judo and you know it was it I had to learn how to defend wrestling moves, essentially. 
Uh, Jiu-Jitsu has a lot of crossover as well, so I did a bit of that. But the only other like martial arts I did a little bit of was kickboxing. Um, but that was just have fun, something a bit different. Like when you're training with one thing over and over and over again, sometimes it's good to, you know, do something different once a week and just give your mind a little bit of a like mental break, I guess. But uh, I've never dabbled in MMA as, as such as the question was. And did you um, did you move to America um, because of your job? Was that um, your physio sort of background, or uh, no? Was that, that was correct? before physio. I moved there ah. like full time for judo. Uh, ah, okay. like, I trained and competed full time uh, whilst I was there. So I used to spend my summers in America. Uh, I just like once I got out of school or college, I would go to America, spend three months there or so, and come home. And then I took a I took a year out after college before university to go and train full-time over there because um, it's just something a little bit different and they, you know, they take everything so seriously over there. And, you know, where I was training, they had, you know, just so many, uh, so many clubs and potential around that area that decided to just go and do it for a year and get the full experience, do the whole like competitive circuit, if you will. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. That was quite That's a while cool, ago. Man. Um, Preston says, Judah, we miss you on Twitch. He's on I Twitch know. sometimes. I know. <laughs> uh, very rarely, I know. He Preston's on every single stream. He was on the last one I did. But <laughs> honestly, like st Twitch is back burner for me. Like I only do it when I've got spare time. And I'll be completely honest with you. I have zero spare time. Like my schedule is so packed out. And there's so many things I want to do that I just don't have the time to do. Yeah. I love streaming. I love doing the, the matches and things. But like... I just don't have the time, unfortunately. And at the end of the day, you know, there are only so many hours in the day, unfortunately. So if you weren't doing YouTube, what would you be doing? What's your, what's, what's your, uh, your, what's your backup plan if YouTube finishes tomorrow? <laughs> so I'm a physiotherapist and I still do that. I still work in our local hospital. I, you know, have my registration. I still do shifts there. So YouTube ends tomorrow. I'm going back to the hospital. <laughs> Are I don't, and I don't look. I don't. Are you full time physio, or you, is it like part time? You sort of. Uh, split no, your time? I, I, I only went like. I mean, I only went full time content creation like not even a year ago, and I, I say full time. Um, you know, I was working two jobs essentially before then, and yeah. Um, it's my job wasn't didn't necessarily let me go part time, so it, it just wasn't really that option. Uh, so it was kind of a case of trying to prepare to a stage where like I felt comfortable doing it because as much as I love, like I would never ever work a job that I didn't, I mean, I say never ever, but I would like, you know, means, means, needs must, but I would always encourage people to follow their passion and work a job that they actually enjoy doing. Yeah. So like I enjoy working as a physio, but I enjoy this more, you know, and it's where I saw that I could you know, put my full potential into because before then I didn't have the time to, I was literally, I could only put so many hours in. So that's where I decided to, to go full time with it. And I didn't, I didn't want to just bin off my degrees and my career that I've built. So that's why I still do, uh, you know, agency work. And also, you know, YouTube is very much, you know, when does it, it, it's, you don't have a contract, you're working for yourself, it's performance based, it's very, it's, it's a very different career, if you will, yeah. so that's why I wasn't ready to just, like, leave my job altogether. Cool, cool. Um, so, when did, when did the, um, the fun but educational content, when did that start? Because I remember your videos from a long time ago, um, that sounds that sounds really like, like you're ancient, but I remember <laughs> like so I, I I found you on the forums, um, on the Clash forums, and I remember watching one where you said basically it was a video of you saying this is the plan I've got for this attack, like let's hit it and see how it works, and then you hit it and and you three starred it, and I was like oh that's pretty cool, I always like that sort of stuff, um, but then obviously this um this I don't know when the um the fun but educational sort of angle came in and i really like it as a concept i think it's a really good way of sort of defining your content um do you know when that came in 
I mean, my uh, content has developed over the years. And I think as a content creator, that's what you should always do. Follow, you know, what feels right for you. And you should always be trying to improve. And I think um, I started out as a bit of a, like, vlog channel, if you will. I was documenting my trophy push and, like, but I was always into the competitiveness side and the war. So that's when I initially started doing a lot of, like, my own attacks like that and then kind of went into a lot of the war recaps and a bit more of the guides and educational stuff um and i guess i've kind of gone through phases and everyone has their own like strengths and i think you know you should play to your strengths in what you what you do and i you know i've just i guess developed and found like the groove that I have today and I, I'm still developing you know I, I look back at my content from six months ago a year ago and like it's it's always kind of changing you just you don't always see that change unless you take a, a large enough leap yeah. back if that makes sense like I think you know people will say that a lot you know if you haven't seen someone for a long time and then you see that but you don't see the difference in yourself every day looking in the mirror you but you would in terms of, I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah. no, like, I know, I know that yeah. my content's developing and that's what you should always do. But I think it's very much just kind of through analysis that's that's done that. And uh, how do you keep coming up with ideas? Do, do you have like a bank of ideas or do you ever find yourself just I have. A, I do have out? a bank of ideas. Um, I Whenever I get an idea, I'll write it down, even if it's one that I can't, you know, do today i've had a number of videos actually that i wrote down ideas and it was kind of months later when i followed through and actually was able to do the video for one reason or another um that's the hardest part um is ideas that it that really is the hardest part of content creation but i think like i said it's going with your strengths being able to demonstrate that and what value you can actually give to the viewers in terms of like why are they watching your channel? What is it that they want? And trying to, you know, trying to deliver ultimately, <laughs> like yeah. give your audience what they want. Uh, we had a couple of raids there as well. Evil Tweedle, thank you for the raid. And Tom's gaining channel. Hello, guys. Welcome in. Um, Gaz has asked. Uh, Gaz Tom was another uh, sort of small YouTuber, small streamer like uh, like me. He's saying uh, he's actually he's he's up he's from up your way as well. Um, mm. Although I'm not 100% sure where I, I get confused with it, and I know I'm not one to throw about getting accents confused, but I'm not sure <laughs> what side of the river he's from or if that makes sense. Um, but um, he's asked, uh, how long um, how long of grinding on YouTube did it take for your channel to blow up? And did you ever, did you ever feel like throwing the towel in with it? Which I think is quite a, um, a good one. I, I think it depends on what you define as like blow up. Um, in terms of my channel... I have never felt like quitting because I love making content. I love YouTube. And if I'm completely honest with you, I probably love making videos more than I love Clash. Like it's very yeah. <laughs> much like I, I just love creating content for the game. Um, yeah. You know, Clash is my favorite game. And I, I, I answer this in the 700K as well. Like people often say like, why don't you do a more popular game or a newer game? But that's my favorite game. That's where my passion yeah. lies. That's where I can make the best content. Uh, in answer to that question, so I've never felt like quitting as such. I've took like little breaks. Like I'd never put massive pressure on myself. So I remember in the early days, like take a couple of days off, like, you know, and that might be needed if ultimately it keeps your head straight for the long run because YouTube is a long run. Um, yeah. I actually look back at my numbers for the 700k thing and it took me a year to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, it took me another year to go from 1000 to 10,000 subscribers. So I think people think that like, you know, you post a couple of videos and that's it. Like, why is my channel not taking off? But ultimately, like I put out hundreds and hundreds of videos before I got to a thousand or 10,000 subscribers and I think I have like 2,000 videos or close to that on my channel so it's kind of like it, it it is a grind it's just how it is because you kind of need to build your audience and your you know you need to nurture that audience but also you need to build your skill set like I have never took down any of my videos nor do I plan to because it's great for other content creators when they're asking this type of question yeah. I always say, like, go and watch my initial videos. You will see 
I was, you know, because a lot of people say, oh, like, how do I get better on camera? How do I do that? Like, go and watch my initial videos. I was exactly the same, if not worse than you. It's just that, you know, through doing, I've developed my skills. And you have to actively try and improve as well, though. Like, you can't just do the same thing every day. And, like, this is not directed at gas here, like, I'm <laughs> talking in general. Like, you have to, you know, be trying to improve as well. Like, you can't just press press record and do the same thing every day and expect to develop and grow your audience because that's not going to like work. It's, it's just not like, how can you expect, how can you do the same thing, but expect a different result basically. So yeah. it, it, it does take a long time. It really does. I mean, it's, I've been on YouTube six years now, um, 2000 videos. So well, just shy of 2000 videos. I don't know the exact number, but yeah. Um, what um, what are you more, work. what are you more proud of? Um, are you more proud of um seven hundred k, or getting was it three videos trending on YouTube? Did you have uh, three at one I point? Had, I had three within. Was it, actually, it was, no, it was four was it within th two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it was really short space of time. What <laughs> what was what was what are you prouder of? I, um, I know they're both quite big achievements. Yeah, I think for different <laughs> reasons. Like, trending is, like, this magical place on YouTube. Like, you can't just put yourself on trending. Uh, but also, it's kind of... I've had videos perform better than those as well and not hit trending because right, trending yeah. isn't a marker of success. It's a marker of... Like, there's a lot of factors. I don't want to bore people with the, the back end of YouTube, but, like, basically, trending is how your video is doing in relation to your channel um, and how it reaches a wider audience. So does it also hit not just your core audience? Does it maintain metrics as it flows through different uh, viewers? But also what is the wider web talking about? Like, is the topic being talked about on X number of websites and are the X number of videos going up? Like, it has to be a popular topic as well. So I punch my microphone. <laughs> so that's where... Uh, like trending's a little bit like out of your control. 700K is like, I I feel is a, a a proud moment in terms of, like I said, the progression that I've gone through to get to this stage. Um, so kind of proud for different reasons. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I have one favorite over another. Cool. I like that. That's good. Sorry. Right. So just to explain to the chat, there's like a list of questions that I've given judo and I've gone off topic about <laughs> about ten times. Just keep throwing random questions at him. So a lot of these he's not seeing in advance. So uh yeah, good fun. Um what else have I got? Um I've got this it's good last though, one. like if you just throw them at me, like that's more authentic. I'd rather yeah, exactly. like I'd hate to just like script answers or something <laughs> like that. I'd far like it doesn't make as good of an interview. Like <laughs> I would far rather just, you know, anyone's got them in the chat, throw them at it. Yeah, I think we've got <laughs> this one this already. For, right? One piece of advice for someone starting out. I am um, someone so I think immediately on uh Twitter you posted and someone immediately said, How do I how how do I start on YouTube? Um I know what my answer is, but if you've got one piece of advice, what um, what would it be? Uh, I think if I had only one piece of advice, it would be just start. Because yeah. <laughs> I feel like everybody that asks, like, do you have any advice for starting out? They're basically trying to, like, get all this, like, oh, like, how do I make my channel success? And you haven't even done anything yet. And I think if if anything is true on YouTube, it is that you have to learn all of the different things. And, and look, YouTube, people might think it's uh, a lot of people, and I think it's maybe a very old way, old school way of thinking, but like it is a skill. It's a career. It's very much, you know, you've got to be a, a, a storyteller, a director, an editor. You've got to, you've got so many different things you need to be able to improve on. You can't just like magically have those skills. And whilst some people blow up on YouTube, they tend, the people that have that, um, you know, let's say Eric, for example, he he's what, nearly on 2 million subscribers now? He's a, um, I would say a vlogger, but he does like challenges. I'm sure some people have seen his channel. He was a, he was a videographer. Like he understands storytelling and how to like craft a piece of content 
of course he's got a better chance of like blowing up over someone that's got zero skills. So unless you just start, you'll never get anywhere. There are people that, you know, are uh, information gatherers and then there are action takers and you need to you need to have a mixture of both otherwise you will never get anywhere cool so awesome. that would be my one bit of advice <laughs> the, the just start it, i think it could that, throw, but yeah <laughs> that's honestly there yeah, that's that's my one as well you get lots of people how do i do this it's like just start making stuff you don't need a camera at first you need some way to record your screen and then just keep going from there it's like just building it up slowly um I've got a couple of questions here that uh, Krunk uh, Bistos uh, sent me, um, talking okay. about London Live, and in fact, a couple of guys mentioned it earlier oh, yeah, on. Um, I think I see a Ned in the chat. Yeah, earlier. Ned mentioned it as well. It, it's um, London Live. How involved were you in that? So this was kind of like this happened all the way down south in London um, when I was living in. I still live in Scotland, and that was too far away from me. Um, and I wish I'd gone at the time now. Um, mm. But um, how did you enjoy it, and what was it like? Did it was amazing. So I was one? kind of the, like, I mean, we had a small team, but like, I guess I was probably the main organizer. Like my name was on everything. So <laughs> if anything went wrong, like it was, it was, it was on me sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, look, that was, it was, a uh, incredible, but in terms of setting it up, it was one of the most stressful, um, it was, it was incredibly stressful because, um, I don't want to get in politics or anything, but like it, it essentially like was happening, then kind of wasn't happening. The venue fell through, and then um, someone decided to announce the next venue and start selling tickets before the venue was actually secured. And I heard that people were like buying train tickets and things like that to attend the event, and we didn't have the venue, so oh, that then man. like put the pressure on me that I didn't want people to have bought train tickets and not end up going so i really had to throw everything at actually pulling the event off then um and yeah there was like there was some tough moments in getting it uh, organized but it was honestly just being able to hang out with like-minded people and meet other clashes in real life was amazing and we raised 2500 pound for uh, great ormond street hospital as well so like being able to have such a good time meet other people and you know that's that's the one thing that through youtube and through clash has blown me away of like the yeah. friends that i've made in the game and be able to raise money for charity at the same time was just incredible so yeah it was amazing um i'm not necessarily ready to organize another one anytime <laughs> soon but i'd certainly attend if someone did <laughs> Right, so since uh, I think uh, Kronk's going to be, but I think he's playing in a match just now, so we'll we'll nominate him just now to organise the next one, and then you're happy to go along, yeah? Perfect. We've yeah, I mean, I look, <laughs> I, I would leave work, and I'd probably spend about six hours on an evening, like, ringing people and ringing, like, on the phone, meeting with, like, other people that I was organising it with, ringing venues, ringing, you know, and I actually came across somebody that, I, I can't remember his name, I wish I could, but... He he was like a, a an organizer in down London, and um, he literally found us venues and different um, like teams that would come in and do X Y and Z like, and he did it all for free because we were doing it for charity. So oh, you know so there were cool. some amazing people out there that helped pull it all together. It was a a huge team effort, and like Supercell were, you know, played a big role in it too. So it was awesome. Oh, that's cool. Um, the the other one, he's sent in a couple. Um, will there ever be a UK mobile open? Have you talked to Supercell about a UK specific event? Um, I don't know if you've got any. Uh, I haven't spoke to Supercell about it. I haven't spoke to anybody about it. I haven't spoke to ESL about it or anything. Like I hope so. There's this ESL, like this UK ESL events. I don't think there's a mobile open though. I don't think there's much mobile in the UK as far as I'm aware. Um, I don't know. I guess there needs to be a big enough market for things, doesn't there? So we kind of have like the ESL mobile open for Europe and North Africa. So yeah, like I don't know why they would do a UK one. Maybe, maybe it could be like tagged into one of the other ESL events, but I don't think there'd be like a huge event for it because. We already have the European and North Africa, which is, in my opinion, like stacked. There are yeah. so much, so many good teams in there. 
What do you think the uh, the strongest scene is if you were to split them down to North America or or let's just let's do all of America. So you've got America, Europe, and just go by time zones: Europe and Africa, and then over the Asia side of things. What's the what's the strongest scene just now? Um, I think Europe. I do. Uh, I think Europe is. I think uh, follow. I think there's. I mean, look, there's strong teams everywhere. Yeah. Um. But I think I think Europe, then Asia, then America. Cool. Without that's, think, that's like going super just... in depth, but like just yeah. trying to briefly think of the teams off the top of my head. That's that's what I would say. Uh, Nestor asks, "Who was the most amazing person you met in London Live?" Please don't say Nestor. Say oh, anyone. I was going to say Nestor. like, do I have to say? I think there were <laughs> how many people were there, Nestor? We had like I actually can't remember how many people there were. I think the venue held two hundred and fifty, but we were a little bit short of that. Um. But yeah, everyone but Nedster. Yeah, <laughs> Nedster, everyone but Ned. Honestly, Nedster was Brilliant. there until the bitter end. People were, you know, obviously leaving as they needed to. And we kind of got caught down to this like little small group at the end. And Nedster powered through. <laughs> Happy days. Um, we're kind of, I'm at the end of my question. I'm just checking chat to see if there's any that are bouncing in. Um, I'm trying to find like slightly unusual ones. Uh, Ryan's asked, Ryan, we kind of answered this one earlier on. How much long do you think Clash will be? And we talked about like, they'll just, you know, while the game's popular, they're going to just keep creating content, aren't they? Uh, Darian's talked about that with like the two, the almost like one and a half year, two year cycle. I think it's more realistic. It'll be a two year cycle now, eh? Uh, yeah, I get. I mean, I mean, he said eighteen months though in between town hall levels, didn't he? And actually, yeah. it wasn't even eighteen months. It was less than that this time. Um, so I don't know. But I, uh, I think the competitive scene, the, the the world has an influence on it. And that's why I think it'll be two uh, years. Yeah, I, I would think. I I think with town hall level, levels, it's got to right because yeah. they. It seemed like they did it before the. Yeah like before the competitive season started so you would you would think so because whilst this balance changes sh surely a new town hall level would like really put a spanner in the works but uh obviously i don't want to speak for uh supercell on that one in terms of like how far will it go i i mean look you can look at google trends and it's like this i mean it's not necessarily like booming up over but it's it's very yeah, very it's still going, isn't stable. It? Like it and it's like I feel it's in that realm of like it's got such a like core audience that I don't think it would you know, I I don't know, you know, when if it would, because it's it's kind of getting into that realm of like a legacy in terms of games. Like no no other mobile game has gone this long. And I think because of that it will always have like diehard fans who will just play it until the day they die, sort of thing. So yeah. Cool, cool. Um, Tom's gaming channel is asking about he's going back to um, edit and stuff. Um, uh, he finds editing the diff most difficult part of things. He uses Premiere Pro. Um, stuff. Did, yeah. did you have issues with that as well? Um, I got use any Premiere on Pro. Editing? Um, I look. It's something that um, you kind of have to gradually learn, and editing is tough and you kind of need to get your own style as well like i've gone through a number of different editing programs um i only just switched to premiere about nine months ago or so but i honestly think you're on the best program because all the different ones i've gone through nothing has the like depth that premiere does but what i would honestly say is you can't improve everything at once you have to pick an area so like whether it's picking um, your like camera presence, whether it's picking your editing, whether it's picking your thumbnail design or your title crafting or like whatever it is, pick areas to improve on and then kind of just rotate through them. And, you know, obviously you can pick your yeah. priorities. You can rotate through them at different rates depending on how you are. But it, to just go like full on and try and like master something, you'll probably miss out on something else. And, I honestly feel like you have to try and build everything gradually. Um, so like improve your editing to a stage where you're like, okay, like I'm comfortable with this now, but I'm still, you know, I feel my weaknesses are X, Y, and Z and work on those. And then when you kind of get everything up to a benchmark, then you can start working on editing. It. Like this is just my personal advice and opinion, different ways to do it. But I found I had to um, like rotate between different things as well in order to one, keep my goals like 
going because I think you can get very not complacent but kind of static in an area if you're just trying to improve on one thing all of the time and there's so many things you need to work on um i'm not sure if that answers his question but yes i'm continually learning editing as well and i kind of just the one of the ways i do it is if i get to a stage in my video and i think you know what would make this part of like the these couple of seconds like amazing is if i could do this i think all right Let's go and find out how to do it. And then, yeah, yeah, I'll go and Google it. I'll go and watch other YouTube videos. Like, look, there's so many amazing YouTube videos on Premiere Pro and editing that uh, that's honestly how I would do it. Um, so, yeah, I kind of Google things as I go as well because that's the best way to learn for me personally. I know people learn in different ways, but, like, learning as I'm doing is the personally the best way for me. So, yeah, I hope cool, that answers man. his question. It's good. Uh, Tom, I use uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is like free Premiere Pro, mm. and it's amazing. I know a lot of people so, recommend yeah. that. So I, I, I really like it. It's, it's I, Before that, I used uh, HitFilm, which is really good for making like composite stuff, but it's it's actually really clunky for editing now that I've got my head around DaVinci. I think it's very similar to Premiere Pro. It's, so, it's just so slick, man. It's so nice. Mm. And now that I'm into it, I've just... Uh, I feel that my, my videos are coming on because I'm using that now. Um, it, sometimes it is like some software makes a difference. And there you go. Gaz says he's a, he's a Sony Vegas guy. So there we go. So different people. Yeah, Sony Vegas things, so. is good as well. I used a power director for the longest time, um, mainly because my PC wasn't like good enough to render out videos quick and power director was, was able to do that even quicker. Yeah. Uh, but then I just felt like I hit a little bit of a brick wall and like I couldn't, I couldn't improve my editing anymore with, well, I could have, but I just felt like if I were going to start working on editing again, which was my like goal at that time when I made the switch was I wanted to improve my editing and I had a couple of goals for that. I decided to just like make the switch. Um, so yeah. Cool. I think Premiere Pro, like you said, DaVinci. Oh, and you've, you've hit a mute on your mic or something. A few moments later. I apologize. I don't hey. know what happened, but I mean, look, you can rewind the stream. What is it? Four times I've punched my microphone during this. So <laughs> it was going to go off at some stage if I kept doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was, we're kind of at the end of questions. So I was kind of like, oh, we can maybe just cut it. I mean, it's a bit of a, bit of an abrupt ending, but you know. All right, well, uh, I apologize. That's, no, that's very fine. unprofessional. <laughs> no, thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, like, so I threw out a cheeky tweet. A proper necky tweet. People, so someone messaged me straight away and say, "How did you get Judo Sloth on?" I threw out a cheeky tweet um, on a Clash Me Anything on a Clash Me Anything post. I said, hey, "You can come on a live one if you want, one of the a live version of one of them if you ever want." And you said, "Yeah, all right then." And I was like, "What? Oh, okay then." So absolutely awesome, mate. Thank you so much. Um, I'm blown away that um, people like yourself and and uh, other people are coming on and it's it's having a lovely snowball effect man where i'm now able to i'm just name dropping you and i've got other people coming up i've got people lined up and it's it's really exciting so thank you so much man every time i'm on particularly with youtubers i'm shocked at the quality of my camera i think my camera's pretty good and then i'm looking at my stream just now and i'm seeing fuzzy face me and you in the crystal dslr uh, picture it's it's shocking so um yeah brilliant guys has anyone got anything else for judo before um preston um judo do you have a strong opinion on burnt base preston's really strong opinion about burnt base while you're away i was talking about how i quite like burnt base and i use it and but um he seems very very angry with uh with life about burnt base have you got a strong opinion on that so no i mean no. i don't have a i know people that use it i personally don't use it because that's my favorite part of the game like even if i don't three star the base i love trying to work out how to three star the base and i feel it de-skills you as a player but you know i think if it helps some people in the clash community and it, they they are going to enjoy the game more then like it's not like this they have to execute the attack and it's not i don't know it's i don't have a strong opinion on it either way uh, I personally don't use it, but yeah, 
And that, I guess that answers the question. <laughs> cool, yeah. There you go. I, I want to say it as well. Six times, so, you know, I'm just like, okay, we can ask that. I want to say as well, you know, we were we were talking about, like, action taking, and, like, you're a prime example of that, you know? You you don't ask, you don't get. And, you know, you're when I say you don't ask, you don't get, you're, you're very much putting the work in as well, though. You know, you get so many questions of, like, oh, will you collab with me? And it's like, well, you've done three videos. Like, yeah. what can you <laughs> offer me? that you know because collaborations have to be a two-way thing if that makes sense so but look i i started out i remember having you know ambitions of you know where i wanted to be and i i was kind of in the same boat actually i reached out to, well i was in the i don't know if anybody remembers daddy the youtuber but i used to be in the uh rising family clans i was in mayhem rising went across to lunar rising i think i had I don't know, 300 subs or something like that. And he came on my channel and I did an interview with him and I'll, I'll never forget that. So, you know, whenever I can, if I see people that are having a positive impact in the community, I'm all about positivity, hardworking, offering stuff to people in, in the way that you do with the wars, then absolutely. If I can, you know, fit it into my schedule. I know I said to you at the time, like, it'll be a while before I can fit it in. But uh, yeah, I just want to say, you know, keep up the good work yourself and, it's great to it's great to have more content creators and more people putting out clash to the world. It's, it's what it's all about.